on, let's go outside, let's take a walk in the sun. There are things to learn and things to see. A big wide world for you, your dog, and me. Dog Talk. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Pat Becker, and we have a super show for you today. Going to start it off with Gabriella, my friend, who has brought Ruger with her today. And Ruger is a thick-haired, long-haired shepherd. Rusty, what do you think of this dog? I think he's amazing. I got to meet him outside this morning when he came in, and he was very welcoming and was excited to be here, but very, it's just a very nice dog. He really is. A good temperament, and apparently he was a rescue, did you say? Yes, he was. He was originally in the Stillwater Pound, and a friend of mine rescued him. And because of uh, issues with his dogs and this one, his dog's not being neutered. Ah. And Ruger was and He neutered. was a breeder, you had said. Yes, he was so a, that would he's be a dog understandable. breeder. And uh, so I, don't, I forgot how I came in contact with him, but anyway. But you have him. That's yeah, the important thing. Yes, I have thing. him, and that, yes. <laughs> And yes, he is a, he's a beautiful dog and very, very well behaved. And we are so pleased that you have uh, rescued him. Of course, so, that's the, the whole thing. There are some beautiful animals in rescues, folks, that, you know, that deserve forever homes. And obviously, they've gotten one with Gabrielle. Yes. So um, how long have you had him? Uh, since last September. And he's currently enrolled here at Twister. Oh, at Twister Agility. Yeah. Okay. So you've given him some basic... Um, Obedience. Oh, great. Which Dave had already uh, implemented that. Uh -huh. He trains dogs as well. Uh -huh. And uh, he was everything, all the, the seven commands he knew. Yeah. Ruger, let me see. Do you, do you have any treats left? I, I do. She's got I bet he's got he one. Likes. He Does likes he hers like, better. She he likes those better. This is, this is chicken. Oh, yeah, that's I chicken. Think he likes hers I was going to say, it's let's see thing. him. Yeah. Let's see him stand and get his because he's on. magnificent. Yeah. Now you boy. now you can see how tall he is. We might yeah. slip one over to my. Uh, there we go. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. Looky there. Gabrielle, tell us why you fell in love with German shepherds. Well, I've had ger other German shepherds uh, previously. Their intelligence, I think, and this one is high energy, and I like that because I like taking my other dog to the dog park daily for okay. exercise, mm -hmm. and he he loves ball. I mean, there's nothing I don't think he would do for a ball, okay. to throw the ball and fetch it. And that way he Plus, gets your attention, and that yes. way it gives him something to focus on. These are such intelligent dogs. I don't think there's any doubt about it. German Shepherds are, they're fantastic animals, fantastic. We use them in all kinds of services. You know, the, yes. uh, the, the folks at the law enforcement absolutely love them and, and some of their cousins. Yes. They're, they're beautiful dogs. Well, we've made him the dog of the week and we'd like to keep him here if you ever want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ever want to lose him, I'll be glad to find him. Okay. This is a $100 gift certificate oh. from A1 Pet Emporium. And uh, we do have a few little uh, toys and things oh. here that I don't know where. Does oh. he play with toys? Oh, yeah. He yeah. does he like He loves toys. If what is that? Weeks, he, he loves huh? What them. is it? What is it? What is that? I've got all kinds of fussy things for you. And they are so cute to play with. Look at that one. That one just, he says, yeah. Pat, I like them when they squeak. Yes, There's no doubt does. about that. So we are going to, uh, to give him these toys, and um, you go into A1 and Pet Emporium and get him some excellent oh, yeah. treats and things, because you certainly deserve it. Definitely. Well, thank you so much well, for bringing you. him in. We just really appreciate it, as we say. Well, Rupert, you come, I mean, Ruger. Ruger, you, go, you come back and see us. I just made him squeak a couple times. Whoop. There it is. Yeah, he's interested. <laughs> he is interested. We thank you again well, thank so much, you. Gabrielle. I could keep him all day. <laughs> very, very nice much. to he's, meet you. Yes, and we were going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. 
Well, I am so excited, Rusty, because we, I have been trying to get an interview with Dr. Molly Ann Holland for a good while. She's an internist and has an oncology kind of clinic, which everybody goes to. It's, it's just um, the kind of facility that there, everything is there. Diagnostically, treatment, everything is there. And I'm anxious for you to see this. So she finally said we could come in. Great. They redid the interior of this building, and it looks like a spa. <laughs> I mean, it really is wow. great. I can't so, wait to see it. So, me too. Watch this. Dr. Holland, how are you? I'm great, Pat. How are you? Thank you I'm, so much for coming today. Oh, I am overwhelmed because I've been after you for months to let me come in. I know this building has been here for, what, 15 years you've been in? We've been here... A little less than that, but you know, pretty close. Yeah, so. and I and I have of course been a client with my my dogs and what have you. My dogs are patients, and I have always been impressed with everything that you have done. Oh, thank you. Recently, you have redone the interior of this building, and I am so excited. And you were telling me that what what was it exactly that you wanted? Well, when I remodeled this, what I really tried to achieve is. I want people to feel warmth when they come in here. You know, it's very scary coming to see a specialist. They don't know me. They don't know how I practice. So I want them to come in and feel warm and welcome um, and, and set them at ease right off the bat. And right off the bat, you've got something that is architecturally and decoratively beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> it is such a pleasure. As I say, I, I just, I'm overwhelmed. The colors are ones that I definitely appreciate. And I'm sure they are the kind of uh, the kind of colors and atmosphere which make people more comfortable. Surely. Now, what is this area over here? This is our dog waiting area. Um, so for our dog clients, you know, we've got a couch that they can sit on, um, recliners that they can sit in. But this way, the dogs are over on one side of the clinic by themselves. And I could not help but notice all of the beautiful pictures. These are excellent. Now, most of these, some of these are your staff. Most of them I see are your clients. Correct. So when did you decide to do this? You know, my husband and I actually went back to the University of Missouri where I did my residency and they had decorated the teaching hospital with pictures of ah. faculty and staff with their animals. And I thought, what a fantastic idea. Each person looks like they're aesthetic. They're so, <laughs> there's such joy in all of these pictures and the, the dogs are just precious. So give us a tour here. All right. So this is our cat waiting area, so the cats can be off by themselves and it's a little bit quieter over here and a little farther from the front door. Um, you know, cats tend to get more anxious when they come to see the veterinarian. Exactly. So. It's perfect. I, it didn't dawn on me that the cats had their own place. What a wonderful idea. Oh, the kitties are so adorable. What else? Well. We'll just head on around. Okay. Through these doors, we've got our cat exam room. Let's visit. The kitties have their own place for examination. Exactly. So that why, why is that? You know, again, some of it is to get them far away from the dogs where it's quieter. This is a smaller exam room. Um, you know, we can drop this leaf um, if we, you know, have a big crate that we need to set on the uh -huh. floor. Um, or we can lift the leaf up if we need a little more table space for the cat to walk around to watch them. Um, yeah, but and that's perfect. And, and would the cats then, if you use the same table, say, for dogs and cats, would the cats sense would they smell the dog smells? Would that upset them or? Hopefully not if yes. we do our job clean and well. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, a, this is a bonus for them. I think that's wonderful. So what does the dog examination room look like? Let's go take a look. Okay. This room is obviously larger. This seems a little higher, a little wider. I guess, for to accommodate your dogs. Exactly. So do you, you have a room where, where they, is the final kind of thing? Correct. May, Correct. I, may I see that? Absolutely. Okay. I have a feeling in this room of reverence. It is a quiet place. Instinctively, sensitively, I feel 
that it would be a place to say my goodbyes. When people come to this kind of thing, what, what are your feelings about it? Well, it's definitely the hardest part of my job. But at the same time, I feel a responsibility to the owners and to those animals to make sure that the end of their life has dignity and respect and, like you said, reverence. Um, I want it to be gentle and peaceful and, and easy on everybody involved because it is a very emotional, hard place to have to go. It, it really is. And along those lines, I have always felt that I wanted to be there with my animals to be the last person. And that most they people saw. that I see do. They want to make sure that their beloved pet knows how much they love them right there at the very end. Yes, it is. It is so true. Well, let's see some more. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm ready. <laughs> So this is Command Center. It is indeed. It is indeed. This is where we stay most of the day. So all of the diagnostic work is done here? Most of it. Yes. Most of it is. So what facilities do you have then that you use? Well, we've got two different ultrasound machines that we have in here. Uh -huh. You know, this one I do all of the cardiac ultrasounds on, um, and that one we can do abdominal exams. This one is really nice for abdominal exams, so mm -hmm. more and more that's the one that I use for abdominal ah. exams. Then there is my endoscopic equipment. We've got microscope over in this corner of the room. Mm -hmm. um, we do have in-house lab equipment. Then we've got a chemotherapy hood so that the chemotherapy drugs can be mixed under the hood safely um, to protect all of, all of the staff and Dr. Reeds from the fumes associated with exactly, chemotherapy. Exactly. I see you have a refrigerator to store the... Biologicals, drugs. correct. Exactly. My goodness. Well, it, it's amazing. It, it really is. Um, and I, I just... And you have, uh, what other kind of machines then do you have? It? Well, in another part of the hospital, we've got a digital x-ray unit, and then we also have a CT unit here. Wow. So we can do CTs on animals. Good Lord. So there is x-ray, the, the CTs, the ultrasound. Uh, it just, <laughs> it's amazing. It is a hospital. <laughs> and a lot of the procedures that are done on people, we do the same ones on our animals. That is remarkable. Remarkable. When you came down here from the other area, from Missouri, right? Did you ever expect that you that this would be this this involved this enormous this facility? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've I've have loved living in Oklahoma. I've got some of the most fantastic clients that you could ever possibly imagine, and they allow me to be a part of their life and you know to diagnose and treat their pets and to get to know them and develop these wonderful relationships um, you know that's the part of my job that i most love are those relationships and that is another another value for your success there is no question about it but this has got to be a veterinarian's an internist dream it's fun <laughs> we have a, a veterinarian here that i am dying to meet her name is Dr. Reed. You think she would be available to us to? Absolutely. I'd Absolutely. love to meet her. Can we All do right, that? All right, let's do it. Okay. An amazing place, really amazing. They have everything there that you could possibly need for diagnostic work and, and treatment. It's just wonderful, it really is. So we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're gonna interview Dr. Reeds. Okay. Hey Dog Talk fans, make sure you join the conversation on social media. Just go to facebook.com slash dogtalktv. We'd love to hear a story of your furry friend, so send us an email to pat at dogtalktv.com. You could be featured as our Dog of the Week. Now, enjoy the show. So Dr. Kimberly Reed, how are you? I'm doing well. We are so appreciative of you giving us this time to, to explain some things, to give us some answers about your particular subject, oncology. And you are a specialist in this field, so we appreciate it. I have some questions. Over time and all of the media 
uh, that I have been in, I have gotten questions from viewers and listeners about cancer because it seems to all of us as though cancer has reared its, as I say, ugly head, and we are seeing more and more of it. Is it because we have not diagnosed it uh, in the past? Is it because uh, the immune system of animals is getting weaker? Is it environmental? Is it the food we feed? Is it simply that some animals, some breeds are, have the predisposition for it and there are more of them in the world? It happens to cats, it happens to dogs. So, so tell us, what are your thoughts about this? Well, whenever we have any type of cancer develop, there have to be multiple things that happen in a correct order in a certain time frame for that to occur. And it's not just one thing that causes a cancer. It's not just the food. It's not just the environment. It's multiple things. Oh. And now I think we're seeing more, and it may be because pets are living longer and people are more willing to pursue diagnostics as well as treatment for these diseases. You know, pet life has really changed in, in the past few years, 20, 30 years, maybe even longer, that they're not just considered agricultural animals anymore. They're in our house and they're in our lives and we love them dearly. And I think people are really wanting to seek out the same type of diagnostics and care that they would receive if they had this diagnosis. So. I understand there is one cat around here that is has five toes. Is this he? No. I believe he is polydactyl, yes. Oh. <laughs> so we were talking about cats. Do cats get cancer as much as dogs do? I think they probably do. I see a fewer number of cats than what I do dogs, and I think some of that may have to do with cats tend to get a little bit more stressed when they come to the veterinarian. Uh -huh. And some owners may be a little bit more reluctant to bring them in for treatment if it uh -huh. has to be frequently. Uh -huh. So overall, I think we see fewer cats in the clinic, but as far as how many cats actually develop cancer, the numbers are probably fairly similar. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's another issue that I'd like to kind of discuss is people paying attention to their ad, monitoring their pets. Um, lumps and bumps mm -hmm. and things of that sort, uh, not eating, uh, things in their stools, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, what, it, what is it about us that we would avoid that kind of thing? We just don't want to, uh, to notice it. We don't want to realize that something could be wrong. Yeah, one of my favorite new sayings is love and denial. We uh, love them so much, and when we find things that could be bad, we go into denial yeah, about yeah. a lot of them. We don't want to think that things are bad. We don't yes. want to think that we could lose them. And, of course, I think the important thing is, of course, to monitor them and, of course, to identify them, to get the diagnosis early so that there can be some kind of, you know, um, good return on that. Yeah. Well, we thank you so much, you know, for the interview and for the introduction <laughs> to this beautiful cat and <laughs> with the five toes. Yes. And uh, for all of the information, it is it's exceptional, and my viewers will be so grateful for it. Mm. Thanks again. Thank you very much for coming. So that is so enlightening. I really, really did enjoy that. You know, it's just cancer is something that is more and more we're becoming aware of, I you know, agree. so it's something that has to be an issue that has to be addressed. Speaking of which, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, our trainers are here. You're going to get us started in some of the issues that really need to be addressed. This Stick be around. You're not kidding. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. Welcome back. We're excited for this episode of Trainers Forum. We have Maddie Snell from Mazzani Training. We have uh, Barb, and I just forgot your last Lewis. name. Lewis. <laughs> she was here earlier. It's great. Right. New, new Leash on Life. And of course, everyone knows Pat. Uh, we're going to talk about something that's very important, and it, it's, it deals with our dogs and their compulsive behaviors. And so I'm just kind of kind of throw it out to you ladies to, to one by one kind of give us your take on what a compulsive behavior is 
and maybe how we as trainers can help the dogs and the dog owners work on it. So we'll yeah, begin. let's let's t let's uh, let's talk about name some disorders that we would that people normally would not recognize. Trainers, yes. But. Absolutely. Well, as far as some compulsive behaviors that we typically see, one uh, that's very common, especially with your German Shepherds uh, and Bull Terriers is tail chasing. Oh, so yes. continuous tail chasing to where they're going in circles and it just becomes to where they never want to stop. Uh, now with these compulsive behaviors a lot of times they are from uh, some kind of anxiety that causes the dog to realize that by doing this behavior, he can kind of get out of his mind and slow down those neurotransmitters that are causing all the anxiety oh, and tension. Absolutely. So, Barb, what do you think? Well, the thing that I have think about the most is dogs that think they can't walk without something in their mouth. They have to have something in their mouth all the time. They're constantly squishing it, squishing it, squishing mm -hmm. it. Cannot even think about eating or anything else. It's like something we grow out of when we suck our thumbs. Right. Absolutely. Very similar. Uh, yeah, the things that come to mind too, you know, they, they have the, the big thing is now is lasers. You have a laser and you shine it and it uh, has a little reflection of light on everything and dogs jump after them and run after them. People have, uh, you know, an extreme problem sooner or later with things like that. The tail chasing, yes, stuff like that. Ball chasing. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, any kind of compulsion like that can get out of hand, can't it? I, I agree. I think a lot of this, though, is genetic. If you get a dog like a Jack Russell, as we were talk yeah. talking about earlier, and they're extremely high strong, they're going to be more prone to, to pick up a habit that can help them clear their brain and, and to, to kind of kind of reset while they're doing this activity that us as owners or, or part of our family may find a nuisance. And that's, that's completely true. So looking into the breed before you get a breed is so critical. It's so critical. And understanding that these breeds that have the higher drives, the higher energy, such as our shepherds and our terriers, are more prone to these kind of displays. Um, and being aware that this is something you can't punish or scold, um, but instead need to make a point to redirect um, and try to give them positive releases of energy that will also help to slow down that train of thought. Exactly. And, uh, go but, ahead. but with the lights, the laser lights, that seems right now to be a really big problem. And not only laser lights, but flashlights. Kids will take lights like that and play with the dogs. And the dogs that have a strong prey drive and even, even maybe no other behavior problems, they don't have any anxiety or anything, but they really enjoy playing with the lights. Mm -hmm. But then that teaches them and they become anxious yeah. when they see reflections of light anywhere. Well, yeah, you know, and it's, like it's, a state, you know, it's a state of arousal, folks, and that is the problem, you know, because they get frustrated because obviously they can't catch that light. It exists, so it goes on and on and on and perpetuates itself. And every dog has kind of a normal baseline of understanding, a balance. This can get them out of that balance, mm -hmm. can, be, can be very, very, very detrimental. And you've got to remember, sometimes um, some frustrations like that can even end up in aggression. Yeah, that, that was going to be my, my follow-up question. So we, we've determined some behaviors. And so my follow-up question is, how can we see that progress in a negative light? Aggression or, you know, attacking something that may not be a light or its own tail or, or you know, whatever it can be. What do, you, what do you think about that? Well, a big part of that can be a displacement aggression. Um, and a displacement aggression means the dog is so fixated, it has such a tunnel vision on what they're trying to go after, that anything that interrupts that, uh, that habit can sometimes cause them to get angry. Um, it's kind of like with people, if you've got something you're doing and you're really focused on a puzzle and someone interrupts you in the middle of that puzzle, sometimes that can cause even more tension. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It pred pred I, th I think it, it's understandable they can get aggressive from stuff like so that. So the question is, what do you do about it? Yeah. 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 And, what, what do we do about okay. it? Okay. And there, there are so many, so many. Um, I talked with, uh, and I made a, a few notes about from some of the behaviorists in some of the larger universities, and there's one in Chicago that is a hospital that specializes in emotional behavior with dogs. And the main thing that everyone said um, down to the last person is divert them. Exactly. 
you know. Now, we talk about agility dogs. Look how focused they are. You know, is it a compulsion? Could be, but it ends. They learn before that impulse control. This is one of the reasons on an agility course, the dog stops at one point on a table in some of the classes and waits. And it breaks that adrenaline flow. It stops the frustration, you see. So then they continue. But the dog is well trained. I the agree. dog learns that. So with a dog, with the laser kind of thing. And the thing that concerns me, frankly, with all those trainers, is some people punish their dogs for these kind of compulsions, which what does that do, Barb? Well, it just makes them really worse, actually. It reinforces what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but it's very difficult to always be able to redirect the dog, but that's what they have to do. And so it takes a lot of work, and it that's why a lot it's of really work. difficult yeah. for people to do. And as Maddie had said, you know, that, that the thing turning to aggression, if they're in the middle of doing this and you punish them, they're gonna lash out. Mm -hmm. Now, another important thing is building a routine, just like with any kind of anxiety. Um, if you have a stable routine that the dog can count on, knowing we go on a walk at this time and we do certain things throughout the day, that can also help increase uh, the- A great diversion. Diversion. It does. And, it, and it, there again, it establishes impulse control. And that's what, that's what dogs lack. And dogs that generally, Statistically, what well, there are 184 breeds of dogs, according to AKC, and of all of the breeds of dogs that go through this, they're mainly the high energy dogs. Mm -hmm. So when you buy a dog, it's just like what Maddie had said, when you buy a dog, be sure you know that this is a high energy dog that needs some kind of outlet. And that's the important thing. And make sure the outlet is not something that they can just get so wrapped up in, they're not going to think about anything exactly. else. Exactly. And this is what I love about people who put their dogs in diverse kinds of activities, you know. Uh, the people that do nose work can do also agility. I mean, there are so many things. I know as a trainer, you know, a young trainer, that these things are, are in your mind and understood. And, and I think that is so important for us, a big factor. I well, think it one, is. One of the big, big keys that I always uh, teach when I first train is all done. You know, yes. I use a, a word and a, and a hand signal that to tell them that we're the done. Activity. It ceases the activity. It makes it really important. It sure does. And it's really good for where we are now. We could talk about this segment for about 30 minutes, oh, and wow. we just clearly do not have enough time. I thank you, ladies, for coming out today. It's been a great episode. And, Pat, I know we'll, we'll be back next week. And yeah, we'll, it's been we'll be. Yeah, and, and if anybody has any questions along this line, do let us know because trainers have the answers. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Dogs. We're talking about dogs. Talking about big dogs, uh-huh. Talking about little dogs, oh yeah. Chasing the ball. Chasing the cat, digging whole thing like that. Dogs, talk about dogs. Laughing dogs, sad dogs, happy dogs, mad dogs. Dogs, just talking about dogs. Lost and alone, running the street, checking the garbage, looking to eat. Out there sad and on their own, the law will get them if they got no home. Dogs. Talk about dogs. Dogs. We're talking about dogs. You say they were eight.